Are you sick of the same old, same old, boring tank drive? Tired of relentlessly digging through Google to find information about just the right drivetrain for your FTC team? I sure was, and that's why I created this video. Fear not, because with over three years of FTC experience and nearly five years of CAD under my belt, I'm here to help. Hey, I'm Red, and today we're going to be talking about the basics of seven of the main options for drivetrains used on FTC robots. I'll be going over some pros and cons to each and giving them rankings in different areas. Design and build, which includes difficulty of design, assembly, and fine tuning. Programming, which assesses the difficulty of developing software around the drivetrain, as well as if there are good resources available for it, and those two will be averaged for the feasibility rating. Finally, the functionality rating, which is based on things like traction, speed, maneuverability, and overall ease of driving. These rankings are based on my personal experience, research, and an FTC community poll that got over 70 responses at the time of producing this video. Now, without further ado, let's get into it, shall we? Before we get too far into this, we should talk about the most basic part of a good drivetrain, wheels. FTC robots typically use one of three different types of wheels. Traction wheels have good, well, traction. They're the wheels that you're accustomed to seeing on things like cars. Omni wheels have rollers around their circumference that are able to roll freely perpendicular to the powered wheel. This allows them to apply power forwards but have little resistance when moving laterally. Finally, mechanum wheels are a specialized type of omni wheels with their rollers at 45 degrees instead of 90. When used in a full drivetrain properly, it can drive in any direction. Now that you know the basics of different types of wheels, we can talk about drivetrains. All of the main drivetrains can be split into two groups, holonomic and non-holonomic. And before you go Google what holonomic means, let me just do it for you. Holonomic basically means the ability to drive in any direction without a change in heading, otherwise known as the ability to translate in any direction without rotation. Helicopters and drones are among the only truly 3D holonomic vehicles, but we'll be talking about 2D holonomic robots today. First up, let's talk tank. Drive. It's the only non-holonomic type and is also known as differential steering. It's commonly used in not just FTC robots, but in things like skid steer machinery and, well, tanks. Tank robots are known for their excellent traction and speed, as well as their ease of building and programming and low price tag. They're typically able to traverse obstacles very well and are great for offense as they don't get pushed around easily. However, they are a bit harder to operate on the field as they can't drive laterally. Tank drivetrains are seen in all sorts of configurations from two, four, six, or even eight traction wheels and sometimes even treads. They only require two motors to operate fully, but are typically seen with four for better starting torque and top speed. For the design and build rating, Tank gets a 10 out of 10 for simplicity and reliability. For programming, two joystick tank driving, where the left joystick controls the left side and right controls right, is incredibly simple to code and plenty of resources are available. Roadrunner, a closed loop path following library, is able to be easily implemented for accurate autonomous as well. Programming gets a 9 out of 10. It only loses a point because in autonomous, more complex paths are required because of the drivetrain's inability to strafe. Feasibility, tank gets a 9.5 out of 10. Functionality, because of the speed, traction, and reliability, achieves a 7 out of 10, also because of its inability to strafe. Moving right along, let's talk about Mechanum, the first holonomic drivetrain on the list. It's also the most common drivetrain used in FTC, favored by almost 86% of the teams that I surveyed. Mechanum is capable of holonomic motion by simply changing the directions of the wheel's rotation as seen in this diagram. Mechanum drivetrains are outstandingly popular with the FTC community, and for good reason. They're easy to design, build, and program, as well as being extremely reliable. They are also relatively affordable, with a full kit from GoBuilda clocking in at just $450, including the FTC discount. While Mechanum is generally an excellent choice of drivetrain, it does have some flaws. Mechanum slip is an issue where the rollers on the circumference of the wheels decrease traction substantially. This leads to slower acceleration and deceleration, and therefore has decreased response when changing directions quickly compared to drivetrains that use traction wheels. They also have less efficiency and speed when moving laterally than forwards. Programming is quite simple, and a plethora of resources and sample code can be found online, like fully functional op modes included in the FTC SDK. Roadrunner is able to be easily used with Mechanum, greatly increasing autonomous accuracy. Because of their availability off the shelf, as well as the possibility of designing custom implementations, Mechanum gets a 9 out of 10 for build and design. Programming, I give it 8 out of 10 because of the resources available and conceptual simplicity. However, Mechanum Slip comes into play here with having to compensate in software for imperfect strafing. It will also affect accuracy in Autonomous, assuming something like Roadrunner isn't being used. 
Feasibility, Mechanum gets an 8.5 out of 10. Functionality, because of the holonomic capabilities, Mechanum gets an 8 out of 10, losing points for acceleration and traction. Another holonomic option is H-Drive. While not very common, H-Drive is a style of holonomic drivetrain that utilizes omni wheels in a tank configuration with an additional powered wheel perpendicular to the sides placed in the middle. It's almost as easy to design and build as tank, with just having to add at least one extra motor and wheel in the middle, as well as easy to build. However, it can be difficult to maintain the points of contact needed for holonomic motion due to slight deformities in the field or terrain, looking at you Fright Frenzy, so a suspension system is sometimes needed. H-Drive only requires three motors though, which can be advantageous if you need as many motors as possible for other mechanisms on the robot. If the robot is balanced properly, strafing straight won't be an issue, however, software complexities like gyro-based real-time imperfect strafing compensation will appear if it's off balance. Aside from strafing compensation, teleop programming is incredibly easy, in fact, easier than Mechanum in my opinion. Because the axial and lateral movement are controlled by independent motors, gamepad joysticks can be directly bound to motor power in about two lines of code. If you'd like to use path following in Autonomous, you will have to program it yourself. Design and build for H-Drive gets a 7 out of 10 because of the possible difficulties with suspension and having to make sure the robot is balanced. Programming is quite simple in Teleop, except for the possibility of real-time heading correction, but because of the limited resources available for Autonomous, programming H-Drive gets a 7 out of 10. This works out to a feasibility rating of 7 out of 10. H-Drive has decent traction as well as good maneuverability, so I give it a functionality rating of 8 out of 10. Let's keep it going with our next three drivetrain options. Kiwi, X, and five-wheel drives are quite similar, so they also have similar pros and cons, which will be condensed into one section here. They're all holonomic drivetrains that utilize different numbers of omni wheels laid out equiangular from the center. Kiwi uses three at 120 degrees, X uses four at 90 degrees, and five-wheel uses, well, five wheels at 72 degrees. None of them are terribly difficult to design, but Five Wheel does require five motors, only leaving three for other mechanisms on the robot, which could be a disadvantage in some cases. All three of these drivetrains do have some issues with efficiency, due to all of the wheels not being aligned with the robot's motion, and some energy being wasted in a sideways push. They also do not have great traction, due to the Omni wheels required. Programming is pretty difficult for Kiwi and Five Wheel as path following libraries can't be used, and more complex calculations are required for motor power in Teleop. However, X-Drive can be programmed exactly like Mechanum, which does make it a slightly cheaper alternative. But it is substantially more difficult to package motors because of the angle that they have to be at. Kiwi, X, and Five Wheel drives all get 7 out of 10 for design and build. Five wheel and Kiwi drives get 4 out of 10 for programming, while X drive gets an 8 out of 10. This works out to a feasibility rating of 5.5 out of 10 for Kiwi and five wheel drives, and 7.5 out of 10 for X drive. Finally, for functionality, due to the efficiency and traction of these three drivetrains, they all get a 6.5 out of 10. Next, let's swerve on over to my personal favorite. Oh, wait, that's swerve. There are two types of swerve drivetrains used in FTC, coaxial and differential. While only two powered wheels are required, this decreases the robot's traction, so three to four wheels are preferred. However, differential swerve requires two motors per powered wheel, which leaves very few, if any, motors available for other mechanisms on the robot. Coaxial, though, only requires one motor and one servo per module, making it more feasible to have four modules. Because of that, we'll be focusing on coaxial for the purposes of this video. Coaxial Swerve effectively combines the traction and speed of tank drive with the maneuverability of Mechanum. It uses a single traction wheel per module, but is able to rotate it, typically with a servo, swervo if you will, to achieve holonomic motion. Simply rotate the wheel to point in the direction you want to go, and presto! However, because Coaxial Swerve has more than one degree of freedom, it is illegal to use an off-the-shelf module for FTC. At the time of producing this video, no viable open source modules are available, which means teams have to design their own. This takes time, hard work, and a lot of prototypes. Swerve is also expensive, with complete drivetrains easily costing $800 according to my survey, so digital troubleshooting will save a lot of money. One benefit of Swerve is that it only requires two motors and two servos for a full drivetrain, but for better traction and speed, having four powered wheels is more common. Swerve is also more efficient than Mechanum, having the exact same traction and speed regardless of the direction of travel. The servo for the azimuth rotation has to operate in continuous rotation mode, so an absolute encoder for position feedback is needed, as well as a PID controller to correct the heading. 
Because of how the robot chassis moves slightly when the azimuth rotates, deadwheel odometry is almost required for an accurate autonomous. However, there are no deadwheel-based path-following libraries for FTC that work for Swerve, so you would have to program it yourself or modify an existing one. Teleop programming is fairly easy, as once your PID controller is working, FTC lib has Swerve kinematics code that can help interpret joystick motion into a heading and velocity for each module. Overall, Coaxial Swerve gets a 3 out of 10 for design and build due to the complexity. For programming, it gets a 4 out of 10 because of the autonomous complexity, but FTC lib swoops in and saves its rating. Slightly. This works out to a feasibility rating of 3.5 out of 10 for Swerve. And finally, the functionality rating, assuming the hardware and software are excellent, is 10 out of 10 for the traction, speed, and maneuverability. I do have to throw in a disclaimer here. Coaxial Swerve is a highly complex and time-intensive project. While it is conceptually the best drivetrain, perfecting the hardware and software to the point that the theory becomes real is an incredibly difficult task. Creating your own Swerve drivetrain is definitely a great challenge for the off-season, but make sure that you have experience with it before utilizing it on a competition robot. Even the creators of one of FTC's best Swerve drivetrains, Team KookieBots16379, admit the challenges that envelop it, saying that, quote, it takes more than an entire season to make it work better than Mechanum does out of the box. We've covered seven drivetrains in this video, so let's go through a quick recap. Tank received a feasibility rating of 9.5 out of 10 and a functionality rating of 7 out of 10 because of its simplicity yet the inability to strafe. Mechanum got a feasibility rating of 8.5 out of 10 and a functionality rating of 8 out of 10 because of its maneuverability yet low traction. H-Drive got a feasibility rating of 7 out of 10 and a functionality rating of 8 out of 10 because of programming ease in teleop but possible design and autonomous challenges. Kiwi and Five Wheel Drive both got feasibility ratings of 5.5 out of 10 and functionality ratings of 6.5 out of 10 due to programming complexity and low traction. XDrive got a feasibility rating of 7.5 out of 10 and a functionality rating of 6.5 out of 10 because of the ease of programming as well as low traction and efficiency. Finally, Coaxial Swerve got a feasibility rating of 3.5 out of 10 because of its difficulties in both hardware and software, yet a functionality rating of 10 out of 10 because of its outstanding traction, speed, and maneuverability. Remember, there is no one-size-fits-all approach to FTC drivetrains. This video was intended to provide a starting point for teams, but it's up to the individual team to figure out what best suits them. There is no be-all, end-all drivetrain, but there are some excellent options. I would highly encourage every team to try out some different drivetrains over the off-season and see what works best for them and the year's challenge. I've included some resources in the description that may be helpful, and I wish you the best of luck on your new drivetrain venture. I hope this video has provided some guidance, and I'm excited to see how your creation takes on the competition this season. I'd love to see what you come up with, so feel free to mention me on YouTube using at MrRedBuilder, and I'll check it out. Peace, love, and robots. Happy building.